We're talking today about king, prophet, priest. We, I want you to write down. And uh, my question is, how do you deal with yourself as a king, prophet, priest? Everybody say king, prophet, priest. Now we know many times the word says yes, and we are traditionally talking about the husband must be the king, the prophet, and the priest in the house. But my brother, my sister, we are all called to be in Christ Jesus, to be kings, prophets, and priests. And in all of that, we will see that for eternity, eternity, we will rule and reign with Christ as kings and priests. Now the word says Jesus is the king of all kings. Now, in comparison, it's talking about that he has the final authority of anything that can call himself a king. But that is all, many times, a demonic force or some physical king. But at the end of the day, he will be king of all the kings that are you, me. Billions of kings in heaven. Where we will rule and reign with him, according to Revelation 1.6, as kings and priests. Kings under the king of kings, priests under the high priest. Are you with me? Find yourself. Find yourself. Because as king, you can have authority. You can give yourself a kingship. You can give yourself a certain authority in the name of your anger, in the name of your talents, in the name of your personality, strong personality, in the, in the way of you as a, a natural leader. But that is not where your authority must come from, first of all. Personality is not necessarily from the devil. But first of all, your authority comes from him that he has given you, the one living in you. Amen? Find yourself. First of all, we can write down. You will be, for me, God says, a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. Exodus 19. When Jesus, through the Father and the Holy Spirit, took you out of Egypt... And you saw the miracles and you sit here with testimonies about what God has done in your life. And when they came out of Egypt and they saw the miracles, they went through the Red Sea. They saw all the Egyptians being drowned. There at the time when it's time to inherit the promises, time to inherit the promises, the first thing God did was He imparted identity. First of all, I brought you to myself. Priest that's about intimacy. Priest in his presence. Priest that he wants to draw you closer to him as priest in his presence. Everybody say, priest in his presence. So God took you out of Egypt not to take you to Canaan. God took you out of Egypt to take you, bring you to himself. I've brought you on eagle's wings to myself. And then, secondly... You will have a certain identity to please me. You will have a certain identity because according to that identity, I dreamt about you. I formed you. I decided, me, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, let us make Caleb. Let us make Peter. Let us make even Ruan. Hallelujah. Are you with me? And in that identity, God says, this is who you will be. Before we go through the desert, before we go to Canaan, you must understand who you need to be. Not first an engineer, not first a man with a lot of skills, not first a man with not a lot of issues or with a lot of issues. Or a man with a lot of hurt. You can be sitting here and you decide, I'm a man with hurt. I'm a man with disappointments. I'm a man who, who failed. I'm a man with a lot of success. And success from heaven becomes success from hell when I find my identity in the success. Hello? First thing, when you have breakthroughs, first thing, when you're out of Egypt, when you're through the Red Sea, when you saw the miracles of God, you have breakthrough. You are coming into your breakthrough and you start to see success. First thing, God imparts identity. Because if you understand your identity, who you are in the midst of failure, who you are in the midst of success, you will grow from glory to glory. And you will live that what has eternal value. That is who you will be. You will be for me. For me. 
God created you for Him. And for Him, you will have authority, you will have intimacy. You will be a kingdom of priests. As kings with authority and priests in His presence. A holy nation. Whoa, what are we talking there? Holy nation. Holy means set aside. But set aside for Him with a purpose. God is not taking you out of darkness into His marvelous light for no reason. But for a purpose. The word church, that means ecclesia in the Greek, that means the called out ones. Ecclesia, you are called out of the world, called out of the rubbish, called out of your depression, called out of your, your, your issues, called out of your success, called out of your failures. Out of that place, into a place where I have a purpose for you. And in that purpose, if God says we will be kings, prophets, priests. And so many times in the Old Testament you will see when the new king had to be anointed. Look at David, look at, look at Saul, look at Solomon. So many, when there's major decisions, there was a king, a prophet, and a priest. There was a king, a prophet, and a priest that were called together when decisions over the nation of God had to be made. When you must make a decision that hopefully will have a major impact, make sure that is king, prophet, and priest involved. King, so that when God, without explanation, just tell you, deal with this, do that, and he's not going to explain his heart to you, you will understand authority and you will be able to submit under authority and you will allow him to have the final authority and not argue with him. Prophet, that God will just show you, do this. You don't understand the reasoning once again. But this is what you see in spite of what's around you. You see that. That's how your word. See what I say. Sin what I say. Whatever God is saying, we will, the church like never before, needs to see what God is saying. The religious system will hear what he's saying, but the church of Christ will see what he's saying, and especially more and more in the end time. That will be the key. That's a prophetic word. May that word for us for this year, may that be true for your life, that after this year, like never before, you have this capacity from your spirit to see what God is saying. You can open up the word, and it's just opening. It's just opening. You can sit here and it's just opening. We speak about the word and it's just opening. You come in the circumstances where you can see God in creation and suddenly you've heard about him like Job said, but now your eye can see him. May that be the revelation that we pray for one another. Amen. But also for that what God wants to do in his church. King, priest forever, but where does the prophetic come in? Let's go. Eternally, as kings and priests, we talked about that, authority and intimacy, the prophetic, to do what? To fulfill every word. Work with the prophetic word. What are we talking about? You are kings, prophet, priest, but when he comes back, when at the end of the world, you will not be prophets anymore. But kings and priests, eternally. Why? The prophetic is there for the word to be fulfilled, and when it is fulfilled, that's the end of the prophetic, because everything is fulfilled. How are you called as a prophet? No, not in the office of a prophet, in the ministry in that sense. Yes, the gifts of the Spirit wants that we must cover the gifts, especially to prophesy. But the prophetic is all of this. The word that, is, that must be fulfilled. That is the essence of prophetic. A word that must be fulfilled tomorrow. A word when I repent that must be fulfilled in one minute time after I repent. So that every word in this book will be fulfilled. Heaven and earth will be shaken. Heaven and earth will pass away. But my word will not pass away. It will not just be there. It will be fulfilled. The rest will pass away, but the word will be fulfilled. So God's destiny for you, the tomorrow that God is excited about for you, is all locked up in the word. And if you understand the prophetic, if you can understand when you open the word, when you hear the word, when you meditate the word, when you memorize the word, when you keep the word, when you love the word, all of that is 
you as a prophet walking into destiny with the prophetic progressive word of God. If we, the prophetic word must be, the word must be fulfilled more and more and more and more. May we pray that our children will make less mistakes than us. May, let us pray that our children, the next generation, will see inaccuracies in our lives. Because they must go further. In every previous generation where God did a lot of revival, 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 more and more and more the bride will be beautified as the bridegroom washes the bride with the washing of the word. Amen. And more and more, the bride of Christ will be beautified in the midst of the biggest rubbish. Amen. Let it be so in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Kingdom of Priests, 1 Peter 2 verse 9. As God said in the Old Testament, when he took them out of Egypt, as God took you out of Egypt, out of that place of slavery, let us not just pray to get out of that place of slavery, but into identity before we go for Canaan. Before we go for Canaan. And otherwise your Canaan will be your curse. The Canaan that God has for you will be your curse. Because you will find your success there and form an identity based on your success in Canaan. Protect yourself from success by establishing yourself in identity, in the identity that God is giving you. Amen. Please. 1 Peter 2 verse 9. So Peter said, the apostle Peter said to the church, you are a kingdom of priests, a holy nation, special people called by God, out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Are you with me? Once again, let it be so. Romans 11. For from him, through him, and for him are all things. To him be the glory forever. That is forever and ever and ever. Let it be so in Jesus' name. How do you position yourself in all of that? Let's see. Amazing how it even correlates. Next point. Kings, from him. Ephesians 6. Priests, for him. Prophets, through him. What are we talking about? As kings, my brother and sister, you find your identity in Christ. You can have authority through your personality, like we said, through your gifting, through the way that you project yourself. You can have authority. But there's only one place of true authority that you have, and that is in Christ. So, from him. No, so from him, you have authority. But don't walk in the flesh and think you have authority. That authority is not from God. There's a lot of guys out there. There's a lot of guys out there through their personality. They are excellent, excellent, excellent leaders. But there's a man and a woman, you and me, with the leader of the universe inside of us. But when you are found in the leader of the universe, and you can open your mouth and speak what is from him, that from him into the world, from him into Bluefontein, through your mouth, through your lifestyle, will come the authority of God. Jesus says, I give you my name, and in my name you pray to the Father. And you will stand in my name, and you will establish in my name, you will establish through my name, and you will pray on earth as it is in heaven. So that on earth it will become as in heaven. So that's you, King, in the King of Kings, so that from you, people will see. If you want to hear something from God, listen to that man, listen to that woman, and you will hear that what is from God. From God through the church to the nation. So it must happen. But the church is not yet in that position because there's too many petty rubbish that we sometimes are busy with one another. May God help us. Amen. So that what will happen in the nation is because it's from God came the voice through the church that positioned itself, herself, as kings, as kings. And the king is speaking through the kings in the nation. And the kings in this nation, it's you and me. Not first of all the president, 
But if we don't know how to position ourselves as kings, our prayers, that what we leave, what we speak, is just reaction to what the world does, as if they have the final say. Learn how to position yourself so that from him, through you, let's say from him, through me. That's Ephesians 6 or so. And in the different passages, clothe yourself with Christ. That means you are on the inside. Clothe yourself with the truth. Now we have the, the armor of God. Where are you? You are inside the armor. Just logic, hey? If you put on the armor, where are you? Outside of the armor, inside of the armor. Inside. And remember we said, it's not just the sword of the spirit, that's, that's the word of God, but everything of the armor is the word. You are found in the word. Remember our illustration? Remember we said the helmet of salvation? Salvation is found through the word. The shield of faith. Faith comes from the word. Hello? The belt of truth. Truth is the feet for the readiness of the gospel. The gospel is the oh. Oh. Are you with me? And the sword of the spirit, the well. Well, you don't touch that sword because it's the sword of the spirit. You don't touch this word. You don't touch the sword without the spirit of God. It's going to kill you. It's going to destroy others. Dangerous thing. May God help us all. Breastplate of righteousness, your righteousness is through the word of God. Only in the word you find yourself with righteousness, that you have the right to stand before God through his grace, through his word. Amen. Priest for him. Priest for him. <laughs> Hallelujah. So from him, with authority in the king, you speak into the world. Now, the next one is for him. Now, many people say, no, I'm not working for God. I'm working with God. You've heard that before. That's not truth. I know we wanted to say through that that we are not in performance to God. We're not performing. We're not trying to win something from Him. And I know that was maybe what we wanted to say. But we are not just working with Him and from Him and in Him and through Him. We are working for Him as priests. Whatever you do, do it all as if unto the Lord. You do it for Him. But because why? As a priest, because you love him. Because you want to minister to him. You want to bless him. He's your focus. In all things be thankful. And in all things do it as if unto him. Priest. The priest minister in his presence to him. Are you with me? So everything God is giving you. Opportunity to grow. Success. Whatever you face, I will do as if unto you. Even though, even though this is not happening, that is not happening, Mr. Habakkuk, and all these things are not happening, still I will, still I will, still I will, because I will stand as a priest. You have now opportunity to worship him in a way that you will, cannot do in heaven. Because in heaven you cannot say, even though all these bad circumstances... No bad circumstances in heaven. But here, even though there's bad circumstances, still I will love you. Still I will worship you. Still I will give my everything to you. Don't mess up your opportunity to love me in a way that you will not tomorrow be able to do. Prophets, through him. Prophets, through him. What you speak, you speak through him. Through him, you will establish that what is from God. So with authority, you come. That man is from where? Oh, he was sent by the king. Oh, then you obey. The devils know when you are sent by the king. The devil knows your authority. He's not the devils that told those sons. Oh, Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? You're a joke. And they had to run for their lives. <laughs> Hello? You need to understand your authority. Are you with me? You need to understand how to be intimate with God and not intimate with your fears and with your circumstances. Are you still here? 
prophets, through him you will speak. Through him you will speak. That's Romans 12, verse 2. Romans 12, verse 2, talking about be transformed. Be transformed in the renewing of your mind. Yeah, because here a lot of things can happen. But if I want to understand the prophetic, if I want to understand what is God's will, I need to understand the word. That this needs to be renewed. I need to start to think the way he thinks in principle. So this is not just ATM for when I need to find guidance, what to do. So this is like, if I want guidance, I go to God, I find guidance, and I go on. No, 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 no. First of all is, God wants you to think the way he thinks about things. So that it's not, I just need to hear from the Lord if I can kill that guy or curse him. Um, that's a very weird example. But the guy that starts to know God, just in principle, the word knows it. You don't pray even about that. You know how he thinks about that. And more and more and more and more, you su we're supposed to know how he thinks about things. You with me? That's the renewing of the mind so that we can know what is his good, pleasing, perfect will of God. So that you know how to walk prophetically, to walk prophetically, for the word of God to be fulfilled through your life, to be fulfilled through your life. How will it be, prophets? As the word says, it's a church that will hasten the coming of Christ. How? Because we see the signs out there, and it more and more it will become the end time, Wars and rumors of wars and pestilence and all the shakings and everything to be shaken. So that God can show and brag about his house built on the rock. The rock, the foundation of who he is. On the revelation of who he is. That will not be shaken. You built your house, you built tomorrow on the word. Your life cannot be shaken. The storm will come. You cannot pray the storm away. The storms must come because God wants to brag about how you've built on his word. So make sure that you build on his word <laughs> and not on your opinion or whatever else we can talk about. Are you, are you with me? But in the end time, more and more, well, yes, they will, all these things will happen. All the rubbish will happen here. 666, six, six, whatever. All the stuff will happen. 666, six, six, uh, a thing under your skin and a, and a number, whatever. That's the most logic thing to do, man. With all the corruption and all the cars. Now you just take that card and in the hands of the wrong person, you just do that and the 20,000 gone. Yo, yo, yo. The most logical thing is somewhere in you so that when you will stand there, take a photo, a very expensive photo, and 20,000 is gone. It's the most logical thing. But there's some way that through what is standing in the word, it's, it's still being held back. But what is the essence of, at the end of the day, the Antichrist? The thing of there's this major powerful force that will control. So more and more there must be a world control. There must be a control. All the control hell can bring will manifest. But for the ones that can see what he's saying, for the prophetic ones, where the only thing that will not be shaken is the Word, that live from the Word, in the Word, through the Word of God, not be shaken, will not be shaken. And we will make that decision. I will be controlled by the Word because I've practiced how to be controlled by the Word. In that day, they must control you because you don't know, and you will fight them and you will lose the battle. But if you are controlled by the Word, the Word will fight them armor of God. The word will fight them. And you will find purpose. And you will become more beautiful, more beautiful, more beautiful. It's not rapture, it's second coming. Sorry, we don't really preach about that. Don't never come again because you believe in rapture. Um, God is not for the bride of Christ hiding somewhere in fear and quickly coming to take her away. God is coming for a beautiful, victorious bride. Because he says, all this rubbish is going to happen, and still it's not the end. Still it's not the end. Still it's not the end. And then, 
the gospel will be preached to all the nations. If the church is gone, where, 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 who's going to preach the, the gospel? Because the church that didn't do his job, God uh, created the second plan. <laughs> no. No. All the rubbish is going to happen. It's not the end. And then the church, the Christians, will take the gospel to the, every nation. And the scripture says, and then the end will come. And then the end will come. When we start to do our job, more and more, we, the, the second coming will be hastened. It will come in that way. Uh, we will go into that, those scriptures in, in, uh, through the prophets in the Old Testament even. Some other time in the future. But my brother, my sister, get into the prophetic. And that is, let the word become alive in you so that you think the way he thinks. So that you see what he's saying. And you will understand destiny and you will leave legacy for the next generation. Legacy will be established. That what will have eternal purpose. Amen. Are you with me? Great. Next one. Prayer and live. Pray and live in the name of Jesus, for Jesus' name's sake, to proclaim and declare his name. His name, his name, his name. His name as a king, his name as a prophet, his name as a priest. Everything must be about his name. His name. When you have authority, everything is in his name. People must know it's in his name. Uh, Jesus being used as a swear word, remember we said that many times? That's the proof that he is the only God. Because you don't find a fake 11 rand because there's no true 11 rand. But you fi find a fake 10 rand that proves that there's a genuine 10 rand. Hello? Not true? So if somebody is angry, he doesn't say, Buddha. He doesn't say, Muhammad. <laughs> but hell must, there's one name that they must try to destroy. Because they are, there's a losing game, and that is when the church used the name of Christ with respect and under the authority of God. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. May God reveal to us the respect that we need to have for his name, so that we understand the authority that we have in his name. Amen? So we pray in the name of Jesus. In the past, some churches more that we will say traditional churches, they prayed many times for Jesus' name's sake, or Jesus' name of will. And we said, no, 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 we're not supposed to pray like that, we need to pray in the name of Jesus. And some of that is right, because God want to wanted to restore the authority and the stature and the identity of the child of God, the individual, to understand his authority in Christ. So it was restored to the church how to pray in the name of Jesus. But, still, you cannot throw away that the word says, for his name's sake. The friend of God, the one that saw him face to face, the one that laid down his life as a priest, the priest pray for your name's sake. The king will pray in Jesus' name. With the authority of God, in the name of Jesus, this will be established, that will be established. The church needs to pray in the name of Jesus. What needs to be established in Bluefontein, in the, in the education, in the whatever sector out there. But for your name's sake, you pray as a priest. So Moses said, God, for your name's sake, don't kill the Israelites. For your name's sake. Because if you kill them now here in the desert, the nations out there, all those heathen nations, they will say, God had the capacity to bring them out of Egypt, but he, were not, he wasn't able to bring them into Canaan, so he killed them all in the desert. Please, Lord, for your fame, for the sake of your fame, for the sake of your name, please don't kill them. Even though many times he was fed up also with them, Moses. You need to understand your prayer life in the name of Jesus. You need to understand your prayer life for Jesus' name's sake. Amen. And if you start to understand that, you will be able to go out there and proclaim his name as a prophet. Tomorrow his name will be established. There is no, no rubbish, there is no th nobody that can say you're not allowed to speak the name of Jesus. That lady that prayed before, uh, in front of a abortion clinic 
silent prayer, and they arrested her. You heard about that one? And they arrested that lady. Those guys who arrested her, they really believe in prayer, you know, that they even arrested her for praying silently. They are, <laughs> those policemen, they really have a revelation of that prayer can give impact, it seems to me. I hope the church will also have that faith, <laughs> what those policemen had. Oh, yeah, you understand what I'm saying. What I'm saying, ay, ay, ay. May you understand in the prophetic, because if you understand, you will be able to speak the word of God, speak the name of Jesus out there. If you understand your authority and how you, what you do, you do it as if unto him. Then you will have boldness and you will speak accurately, prophetically, what God wants to do in Bluefontaine tomorrow what he wants to do in that school where you're involved, what he wants to do through your business, in your community. You will speak, and what you speak will be the word of God. It will be God's plans, God's strategies, God's desires. Okay, you with me? That's the last one. Your prayer. All I'm saying is your prayer. The way that you pray, if I can use that as a final example. How do you pray? Too many times we just come with an agenda. But as a priest, I hope that many times you will just go and say, God, I love you. I told you sometimes in the evenings before I lock, I will just go out and look up to the stars and say, thank you, Lord, for who you are. Oh. Remember we talked about this a few times? Find a spot, man. Come to the crosses. Get the key. Go to the crosses and just go and thank God for something. You and your family, you alone. As you would go, or you and your wife would go and have some nice coffee or this or that or that, I don't know what. Or shoot a flag fork. What's he doing? Or talk. No, this thing. Um, there's some of them on the farm. If you want to make cover noses, so do no me like good. But in any case, that's beside the point. Hey, sorry. The point is. Come and get the key and go to the crosses. Just there, just for the sake. It's not about, it's not the Roman Catholic. And go there and uh, have a prayer of thanksgiving. Don't ask him anything. Go there and thank him and honor him. Come back, give the key and go home. Create that opportunities as a priest. Amen. Go and create those platforms for you out there where you just went to thank him, just to worship him, just to say to him, I love you, Lord. Oh, man. You will see certain fulfillment in you because you were called also to be a priest eternally. And when you live according to your calling and according to your identity, you will find fulfillment that you never knew that it will come if I do that. You, are you with me? So in your prayer as a priest, there's, there's a thank you. There's a worshiping, there's a awe, there's a wow about God. Wow about God. But in your prayer also as a king, you need to declare. Too many times we were, we were not again, stupid. And say, yeah, they are like that, and that is like that, and that is like that. And, and that church is like this, and the church, this, and the church is that. And, all. and you took, take the, all the authority from hell, from demons, and you curse where life and death is in the power of the tongue. You have no right to do that. That pride comes before your fall. No, God must help us. God must help the church globally. Amen. Why well, take away the pointing of the finger? Right. Bless those who curse even. Bless those who curse the church. Are you with me? So with his authority, bring that what is from God. Because when you open your mouth in the name of Jesus and the authority of God, Things must be shaken, not because of who you are first, but because of who he is, and that you gave him the final authority, because you respect his authority, then you will see things will change. Things will change. So in what you pray, there's a thank you, there's a worship, there's a wow as a priest, but as you pray, you better also stand as a king and declare. Declare the answers, declare the word. That's you need to come to another word, or even just get into the Psalms, get into Psalm 119. You'll find enough there even. It's, most of it is a prayer. 
So many psalms are just prayers, prayers. Start to pray the, the psalms. Are you with me? And you will start to learn how to put the focus on him. Okay? Are, are you with me? But so that in your prayer, you can pray prophetically. When you understand to pray in the name of Jesus, when you start to understand how to pray for his name's sake as a priest and adore him and worship him and thank him, then more and more the prophetic will come through. And what you pray will just be from God. It will just be God's perfect plan. Even when you pray in tongues, my brother, my sister, when you pray in tongues, you don't know that at that stage you are in tongues worshiping him. And when they worship the Lord, God confused the enemy. And that even in tongues, singing in tongues, sometimes you are just worshiping, but you are worshiping accurately as a priest. And God is confusing the enemy. There's confusion in the enemy's camp when they started to praise God if, in the right way. Hello. When you pray in tongues, sometimes it's like authority, that with authority you are declaring certain things in certain people's lives. So that many times when you're praying in tongues, you are just prophetically accurate. You are just prophetically accurate. That you know it's now time to pray in tongues. Be open to the unction of the Holy Spirit. Please, please be open. Because then you are rising up as a prophet, priest, and king. And then you're praying in tongues and it's the moment when there's a hundred Christians coming together in Ukraine and they just sense and one just rise up and say, God says we must move out right now. Stop the service, move out, don't flee, move out and we're going there. Going there, boom. And so oh, everybody would have been dead. What happened here? God got a few guys that were not focused on themselves, and in four different nations, he got a few people that just started to pray in tongues. That he could use as a vessel of intercession, so that the, that hundred guys will be sensitive in the spirit. And just know what God is saying. You will only know that in heaven. God is very strategic. God is a strategic God. For people who are willing to be used by them, by him. Are you with me, man? Man, I, I, yeah, I, 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 I spoke about that one guy. I didn't want to because I used this example a few times, I think. When I worked in, at, uh, in Pretoria to pay off my medical bursary, and uh, I was getting a lift from this uh, German guy on this Friesslicker bike, and he went through the traffic like this, you know, in the video games, you know. Yo, and I was praying many times on that bike. He was an atheist. He always said, I must pay more petrol money because it's me and my angels. It's not just 50-50. And, uh, and so one night, one night I just felt I must pray in tongues. And I prayed for half an hour in tongues for no reason. And about a week later, this guy came to me. He said, I had a, many, a lot of accidents, 10, 20 in my life, where you roll a car with a bike and this and this and this. But I was on the gravel ground and I hit the sand bank. What is the sand bank? Something like that, hey. And, and normally I would just curse and swear and whatever. But for some reason I called out to your God. And I just said, Jesus help me. And the next moment the car was just boom. Still. I didn't want to tell you that. <laughs> This is what happened. And when I figured it out, it was exactly, exactly the time when I prayed in tongues. God is a strategic God. Please be available as king, prophet, and priest for whatever he wants to do. Because at that time, you know, sometimes even, a, uh, I, you've heard maybe many, many examples of a mother that just knew I must pray for my child now. You've heard that before. And the mother just, no, I must pray for my child now. Not out of fear, there's just this thing. And it was exactly when it was needed. And so, God wants to use his church. Stand as a priest with God. Stand as a king. And see, see what he is saying. So that you don't waste your time reading Bible. Don't waste your time coming here together. Don't waste your time speaking about the word of God to one another. If you're not 
having a desire to see what he is saying. And the church will come into that place, come into that place that you will be on cutting edge ahead of what's happening in the world. Not reacting to what is happening in the world, but leading in front. I said to this one guy last night, you know, before lockdown, where's the Christians that heard from God? I must buy a lot of this. I must buy a lot of that. When it was very cheap, 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 cheap. Before lockdown, when that thing became this price. Hello? They could have made a lot of money. But there's a lot of guys that made money who manipulated certain stuff out there. But the riches of this world will become the riches of our God for his kingdom's sake. Not for you just to be enriched with money, but so that the money will serve the purposes of God for the kingdom. And with that, God wants to speak to you prophetically in your business. That you will just know, oh, we must buy some generators. We must start a shop where, where you have this or that, or uh, sun panels. And then, what the heck is that type of thing? Where did you find people doing sun panels? Oh, and just two months later, this thing is just there, boom. And you have this bo booming business. Why? Because you were accurate with, with God. And you know how to honor him. Because you knew that business strategy, you didn't hear from yourself. You knew it was when you said, what the heck, that's no way I must do that. And then in foolishness, you thought you just did it. And then two months later, you were nearly ashamed. And how just God opened the door in that. We need guys like that, prophet, king, and priests in business. And that will happen. And the world must say, how did you know <laughs> to start that? How did you know to do that? Because there's the Illuminati or I don't know who else. They are, can be very clever to position themselves to make a heaven of it. Not a hell of a lot of money. But the church is supposed to be right there in the forefront. To testify about God's goodness. To testify about God is in control. God is in control. Yeah, from God. Yeah, from God. Maybe I end up with that in a prophetic way with, uh, you know, I bought the two houses in Universitas. I spoke about it. I don't know if I spoke about it here. Long ago, when we, I started with Creare, uh, God said, students cannot live in a house that's rented. Because a lot of guys from Africa, I cannot rent your house and say, I want to rent your house. There will be 12 people staying there, but six not going to pay. Only other six going to pay. So you, that guy will just say, food sack, man. You know? But God said, you must buy houses. And then I picked a house. I, I said to the agents, I find, want to have a house like that, my spiritual father's house there in the university. Does. I want a house like that house. And nothing happened for two, three years. I signed some even, uh, some, uh, what do you call it? Offer. Uh, put in an offer for a house. Praise God, in His grace, they didn't accept it. Hmm. And then, my spiritual father went to heaven. And the house that I picked in Bluchendein came available, 340,000, 45,000. Oh, okay. And uh, for that, uh, the monthly installment is 3,500. Okay. According to the bank, that must be a third of your salary. Hey, everybody know that. Hmm. So my salary must be about 11,500. 11,500 for the 3,500 installment. My salary was how much? 2,800. Absa said yes. I think the angel wings did this. And they just said yes. <laughs> So that's how I bought a house. And the next year there were no more students. And I asked the leaders, who's going to buy a house now? Because God said that's the only way. Nobody wanted to buy a house. Walking in the garden, I said, God, what must I do now? We must, there's 30 students coming. Uh, uh, what must I do? We cannot tell them, you cannot come to Creare because we don't have a house for you. And I was praying, praying in tongues, praying in tongues. Not like five minutes, praying in tongues. 
like for long in the garden, and the emotion is not, I'm in the spirit and I'm praying in tongues. The emotion is frustration, man. You know, I'm not finding an answer. I'm frustrated. And God said, buy another house. I remember the thing I said to God. I said, God, it's not like buying a hamburger. Buy another hamburger, you know. <laughs> a whole a house. This was one major miracle with a salary of 2,800 rand. Buy another house. And I said, Lord, in any case, we thought of an, a second house that's then close to the first house. I said, no house here is for sale. Praying, 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 tongues. God says, pick a house. And I thought, okay, you've picked this house. Now, based on the success of you've picked this house in Bluefontein, you got this house. Oh, pick a house. You know, it's your own mind. It's not God. I said, God, but this house next to uh, Paul Creer, it is too busy. That house is too small. That house with a lot of trees, that's a very nice house. And I've realized, what can I lose? The lady can just laugh at me and say, hey, you're totally crazy. So me and Peter Jones, we went to the lady and said, I'm your neighbor from nine months ago. From nine months ago, I, I'm, I'm your neighbor. I just want to know, I know your house is not for sale, but don't you want to sell your house? I have one problem, just I want it in three months. The lady said, you won't believe me. I wanted to say, tell me. <laughs> she said, for two years now, we know that we must sell our house. There's a, a nurse staying with us. My husband, half of inside, gone. And, uh, and we know for two years we must move. But we stayed here for 25 years. We are so, you, know, you understand. We are so, our whole life with kids, memory in this place. Come and speak to us. And then Kriari prayed. We didn't think the pastor is not like a cuckoo. Then they prayed. And then uh, we went there again, me and Peter. And then that night, that night, um, he said they, they said they will move for 325,000. Five bathrooms, more than 2,000 square. Big place. Hmm. I said, thank you, Lord. God said, no. He said, thank you, Lord. I said, no. I said, I wanted to say a few times thank you till I don't hear no. <laughs> but it didn't work out. So God said, speak to me about salvation. I said, Lord, can we sign the deal Monday? Next day I lead him to you, and Wednesday I take him to sell. Just giving God some strategy, you know? And, um, and it was just no. And I've, I really believe this was just some other test, you know? So I asked him, how are you doing? How are you and Jesus doing? He sweat. He just, psh, he said, don't you go there. I don't pray. There's no prayer. There's no church. There's no Bible. My wife, she's, she's going to church. She prays. She, she and God, yes. Me and God, no. And God said, carry on. Carry on. I've like never, only once, only one other time, forced somebody like that to give their lives to Christ. Later, the guy was so angry. I said to him, you're going to chase us out here. And I'm going to lose the house. But I'm not leaving until you've given your life to Christ. And he said so many times, the doctors, the, uh, the, the specialists said, that I supposed to be dead two years ago. I said like, I don't know many times, many times, 10, 15 times, the only reason why you live is because you must give your life to Christ. But I just said it. I didn't say something. I just said it. And after two hours, instead of 15-minute meeting, after two hours, he knelt down, he gave his life to Christ, cracking up totally. He said, pray for my children. They will never serve Christ because of my life. I said, no, you pray for your children. We help him, we let him. Oh, the presence of God was just there. It was just amazing. We left there, and I said, I don't know if we have a house, but God had an appointment with this man. It was Fred Sharp. He was uh, the director of Buckoffs, and he was a, a radio I'm Riper, but it's Omrooper, radio presenter at the SABC. And uh, so, Tuesday, Wednesday, I phone him. I want to hear, is the deal on? And I want to know if I can invite him to sell. Phone, son answers, can I speak to your dad? He said, no. I said, is he angry at me? He says, no, he's dead. 
and I just sat there, stood there with goosebumps. And um, we led him to the Lord Sunday, uh, Saturday evening. Not 24 hours later, Sunday afternoon, he died. And I didn't feel God's presence. I just said, the only reason why you live is because you must give your life to Christ. My brother and my sister, as a prophet, you will be so shocked how many times, in a very natural way, God wants to use you. That what you are busy with at that moment is spirit-led. And it's not when you have first just the goosebumps or the sensing. In so many ways, God wants to raise you up that your life is prophetic. Come on, man. When we spoke about prayer, I, I testified about this also. At the funeral, a guy came to me and said, did you lead my brother to the Lord just before he died? I said, God organized it. He said, come to my mother. And he said, we are four brothers. Three of us gave our lives to Christ. My mother prayed for the past more than 10 years. 10 years for his, her last son to give his life to Christ. I went to this old lady in the 90s. She was sitting there. I told her the story. She was like shaking, crying. Uh, she said, my son, do you know what I prayed? I said, I, I would not know, auntie. She said, I prayed, Lord, save my son like the sinner on the cross. I said, my auntie, he just, he just did it like that, right? That's the way he did it. When you pray in the spirit, please, Many people will be pushed into God's will with your prayer. I was pushed in that place to talk about Jesus by the prayer of that auntie. Are you with me? You don't. That, that song we're going to do now, yeah, is based on the prayers that my mama prayed. We're going to do, do a mime. It's going to be a mime about that. Please, my brother, my sister, you pray in tongues, you pray whatever God, you speak to him and you pray out what God is saying. Because on the one side, you, just, you worship him. On the other side, yes, you stand with authority in the name of Jesus. But prophetically, you can be very sharp into any place on earth when you understand your stature and your intimacy that you can have with God. Are you with me? And lastly, so monthly installment is 3,500 for that one also. But I got an increase in my salary, so we can do it. I got an increase from 2,800 to 3,000. So with a 3,000 salary, APSA said yes for a 7,000 monthly installment. And you call that the Lord, not APSA. <laughs> Hello. God wants to provide for you in ways that you don't even know. That afterwards, you will just be able to say, Hey, this is only God. <laughs> this is only God. Are you with me? I want to encourage you here from God in His provision, in His destiny, in that what He has for you out there. Go with Him. Amen? Thank you, Father, for who you are. God, we love you, and I pray that we will really understand your heart, understand that what you have for us. God, I pray for every man and woman in this place that they will, they will rise through the word of God in stature as kings under the king of kings. God, I pray that each one of us will understand not to moan and groan, but how to worship you and thank you in all circumstances, in all circumstances, so that in everything we will give thanks to you. And in whatever we do, we will do it as if unto you, Lord, as priests. So that, God, we will learn how to be prophetic with your word. How to speak your word. How to see what you are saying. So that we can walk prophetically with accuracy into our destinies. And that we can speak forth the destiny of nations. We can speak forth, we can pray forth the destiny of Bloemfontein, University, schools, businesses. God, that we will speak forth the, the prophetic destiny for the next generation. Help us, Lord, through your grace to be raised up in that. We thank you for that, that you come and do that in us and through us. In Jesus' name we pray and all say, let it be so in Jesus' name.